I went on a tender date some time ago while I was adjusting to a new city I would moved to. I didn't really know anybody there, so I used some online dating apps to see the dating scene around town. I landed one from a girl that seemed just like an artsy hippie girl type. We had a few exchanges through the Tinder app and decided to meet up for a drink. I picked her up at her house and she greeted me at the door and gave me a hug. She said the name of a local bar she wanted to go to for us to chat and get to know each other. I told her I would drive and proceeded to my car. The first red flag I noticed was when I walked to my car and opened the door. She just followed me to the driver's side and started standing behind me staring. I looked at her blankly for about 15 seconds and asked her if she was going to get in. She said, sure, I'd love to, and went the long way to the passenger side around the back of the car. Since I had just met the girl, I figured she had maybe smoked some weed or something. As I got that kind of vibe, she was just a bit of a stoner. As I was driving to the bar, she talked in a very low voice, almost as if she was trying to whisper. I'm not hard of hearing or anything, but I had to ask her to repeat herself several times just so I could make out full sentences of what she was trying to say. When we got to the bar, I made sure we got a seat closer to the back, away from most people, just so I could have a little quiet in order to hear her. The conversation honestly carried on normal from this point, and it was actually a fun time for the beginning. We talked about different things we were interested in, and she did bring up that she does use weed and a few other tripping substances, like shrooms and such. I'm not much of a fan of these, but at least made me relax in the back of my mind to think maybe she was just high off marijuana, and that rationally explained some of that out there behavior that was going on. Granted, I had a few drinks at this point, so I was honestly not thinking straight. I asked if she wanted to go to my place after drinks, and she agreed. We went and got to my place, and a few more drinks happened. And then she started talking about her jewelry. She told me her jewelry was her big secret, and it defined her. When I asked her why it was so important, she said, I'm actually Anastasia, and I was never killed in Russia. My jewelry is my link to my past. It was hard for me to take that serious at this point with how much I had drank, so I kind of challenged that statement using the little bit I knew about history. At this point, she freaked out and started yelling at the top of her lungs that I didn't respect ancestors in history, then got quiet and tiptoed right up to me and grabbed me by the neck. She then brought my face eye to eye with hers while still holding my neck. She says at this point, I'm a shaman, and I curse you. My ancestors have destroyed many people, and you do not respect that. You are from oppressive ancestors, and they will be punished. Then she put her hand on a whiskey glass and made a cross on my face and kissed my forehead. At this point, I started to sober up a little. I talked her into calming down and telling her I was only joking. Then she slowly started going back to normal. Then she started talking about her cat fetish. She tells me she has a list of people who she tames to act as cats. I am not about judging people and their fetishes, so I listen in. She then tells me all the things she does to them and starts acting like a cat in my living room. If she had not yelled at me earlier, I might have almost been turned on by it. My red flags in my head were tingling like crazy at this point, so I just listened and tried not to set her off. She noticed sage on my kitchen counter and asked me to let her light it and bless the house. Side note, I use the sage to make my house smell better occasionally. It's kind of a ritual I like to do, but it's mine and mine only. Something I take very personally and like to do myself. I tell her no, she can't light it, and that's my thing to do on my own. Then she freaks out, telling me I'm a horrible human being and screaming all over the place. I tell her I can take her home now, and she runs to the door and goes outside. As I get outside, she's screaming at the top of her lungs that I'm a horrible person and that I should go die. I tell her she can walk herself home then, and I go back to my place and lock the door. She then starts banging on the door hard about 10 minutes later, saying she left her phone in there. I grab her phone off the kitchen counter and open the door and hand it to her. She tries to barge inside, and I block her with my forearm. She then acts like she's about to punch me. I just hold my ground and tell her she's not coming in. She screams she wanted the whiskey bottle we were drinking from. I told her hell no, because I paid for the damn thing. I slammed the door at that point and locked it. 
I heard her bang on the door for a minute. I then heard her footsteps going down the stairs. I waited for about an hour and then went walking outside to see if she was still hanging around. I didn't see her, nor did I ever see her again after that. I know this is probably not the scariest encounter ever, but for the next few nights, I was totally creeped out, always walking around the area I live to make sure she wasn't hanging around. I honestly hope she's okay, wherever she is, but I'd hope to never see her again. So some context, I've never really been in a long-term relationship. I've dated a girl a bit, but I haven't dated a guy, I'm bi, and I've never slept with either a girl or guy. The story, like anyone else, I was age 20 female. I was swiping on Tinder to try to put myself out there. I like to think I'm not naive and pretty intuitive about people, but I wasn't quite so much about this guy at all. Jake and I swiped and matched each other two days ago. Jake first messages me, telling me he wanted to meet me and my dog, and he thought we were both cute. The night was the first time the first red flag was raised. When I didn't answer him back immediately, he messaged me asking if he was detecting negativity. Chalking it up to nervousness, I apologized and explained why I didn't answer, and all was good. We then planned to meet up at a bar. Flag number two was waved when I arrived at the bar. It's important to note, in the state I live in, any place selling liquor can't let someone under 21 in. I didn't know this, and had been assured by Jake that I could get in no problem. Of course this wasn't true. Luckily, in retrospect unfortunately, seeing my birthday was in a week, the bouncer let me in anyway. Within minutes, Jake was at the bar too. Beating this guy, he seemed normal. Red leather jacket, chucks, typical normal dude. He ordered me a gin and tonic and one for himself. We settled in to talk. He tells me about his life. He is rich and his family and I do the same. We play pool at one point. So I put my drink down. This is when things got a little blurry. I can't remember most of our conversations up until we happened to getting back to my place. I remember us leaving, us getting in the car, and us getting back near my place. You have to understand that I don't drink much, but one drink does not get me drunk. I don't get hangovers, I barely even brown out, and I never black out. This is important to note. Once in my town, we decide to go to a nearby market to pick up food. As we are there, red flag 3 occurs. Seeing someone I thought I knew, I told Jake I was going to go say hi. He awkwardly backed away and stood outside at this point, refusing to meet her. I was wrong though, I didn't know the girl, and soon rejoined him to walk to my place. As we open the door to my place, my roommate Maddie opens the door. We say hi, talk a little, and she mentions she's about to take a shower. Jake at this point creepily makes a oh sound. Maddie, who is also tipsy at this point, mentions some guy she wants to have sex with. No biggie, it's the way she rules. But after its expression, and the realization of how tired I was, and how drunk, I say he should go. He does with no attempt of any physical contact. This is where the story should have ended, but it doesn't. Within minutes, this dude blows up my phone with messages, saying he is more open-minded like my roommate, calling me boring, implying that I am not attracted to guys saying that he felt no chemistry and he hoped we would have cuddled. I show my roommate who gasps, me not getting the full meaning of the open-minded comment, remember, drunk, asks why she's so shocked. Finally I get it, he's implying he wants to sleep with her, that he is more open to sex than I am. Creepy, just so creepy. At this point I'm freaking out, slowly I realize how I'm acting and feeling, putting together how one drink shouldn't make me feel this way. I realize I might have been drugged. Maddie and I go to a local police station. We report it. I decide to get tested. I could explain why, but until you're in my position, possibly drugged at 3am, embarrassed, worried you're wrong, worried you might be charged for underage drinking, don't judge. It's a lot harder than it looks to go through the whole process. Anyway, the story ends like this. He's blocked, I'm terrified because he knows where I live, and me sleeping off whatever's in my body. Jack from Tender, let's not meet again, and please stop drugging girls. Also stop creeping on people's roommates, it's fucking gross. Sorry, this is a lot longer than I intended. 
So about four years ago, I was doing a year abroad in Switzerland as part of my degree. Just before leaving, my boyfriend and I ended our relationship as he was off to America and myself to Switzerland. Anyway, I was quite bummed at first and then decided it'd be fun to download Tinder and just piss about and date meaninglessly as I wasn't going to be there for quite long, just for an academic year. So I went on quite a few dates. Some were god awful and some were pretty decent people. I was in Geneva, so there were people from everywhere basically. A few months in, I matched with a French guy and we were chatting for a while. My French and his English were more or less the same level, so there were a few mild miscommunications, but nothing too big. I was 20 at the time and had my age preference set to something like 20 to 27. So I've been chatting with this French guy, I'll call him Pierre, for a couple of weeks now and he seems quite cool. He's 27, so fair bit older and he's a science secondary school teacher at an all girls school. Remember this as it makes it even weirder. So we went for a drink and he buys us quite a few rounds which is great because it's Switzerland and I'm a poor student. By the end of the night, I'm pretty drunk, and I remember making out with him and then getting dropped back to my student homes by Pierre. He had been drinking soft drinks after the first. Anyway, I see him a couple of other times after this, and he's always pushing the alcohol when we're together. One evening, I slept over as it was too late for me to get back, and I wake up in the morning, and he'd taken my bra off while I was asleep. He was wide awake, rubbing my back and staring at me. I hadn't slept with him yet, making out was the furthest we had ever gone. Then he told me his mom was coming to visit, and did I want to meet her? I only met this guy like three times, and I decided I was done with this weirdo. So when I left, I was planning on what to say to get rid of him. Anyway, back home later, I got a text that said something in broke English like, We slept beautifully, with a smiley face, and I just left it unread. Later that evening, I got a call from him, but I just let it go to voicemail. When I listened to it, he sounded really upset and said that he had to confess something to me because he was falling in love with me and needed to be honest. He revealed that he lied about his age. This reminded me of that episode in Friends where Monica accidentally sleeps with a high school student, thinking he's in his 20s. This guy looks quite young, so I thought he lied and he was younger than 27, but he's actually 35. I know that's not particularly old, but to date a 20-year-old knowing she thinks you're young, I find it weird. I blocked him on Facebook and on my phone, and just sort of got on with the last week of term. He turned up at the reception desk one day having known where I lived, because he dropped me off that one time. The receptionist asked him to leave, and informed me he got quite insistent, so he warned me. I didn't hear from him again after this, which was good and I was flying back to the UK in a week for the Christmas holidays. During the holidays, I got a random Facebook friend request from a pretty legitimate looking profile, so I accepted it just in case I knew them. Bad idea. I get a huge great essay from Pure saying, I had tracked your flight all the way back home to check on you to see if you got home okay. Okay, creep. I blocked this other profile and got a message request from another profile about a week later saying he had checked flights from Bristol to Geneva online and decided that I would have chosen the cheaper one closer to term so he will meet me and we can chat. Now I don't know if he just turned up to the airport every time a flight from Bristol came in. There were about two to three a day, but yeah, when I land and I didn't think he'd be there because who would be able to guess the exact flight I was on? The minute I come through the gates, I see him holding a sign with my name on it and some flowers. Luckily, he was distracted at the time, so I managed to slip by and get on the train into the city. My friend was already back, so I told her to meet me, and then we went to the police because this guy was fucking weird. Didn't have any trouble with him after this, as he probably found someone else to obsess over. But again, he's a teacher to girls 11 to 18. So gross. Anyway, let's not meet again, Pierre, and I hope you're not hanging around the airport still. So this just happened today. Against my better judgment, at the beginning of the month, I got tender. I matched a few guys, etc. One of them was James. We ended up texting each other and he seemed pretty chill. 
and pretty into me. He's a decent looking guy and we seem to click. He had apparently been in a relatively abusive relationship with a woman and he was looking to start over. According to him, she had hit him with a frying pan and pepper sprayed him once. He kept going on about how crazy she was. Alright, it happens. We went out to the movies this past Friday and had a great time. We ended up talking for a few hours and we hit it off pretty well. I asked about the ex because I was just a bit curious as to why he'd stay with someone like that. He didn't say anything positive about her, just that she was crazy, had mental illnesses, and didn't take her meds, that kind of stuff. She had tried to baby trap him, but she had a miscarriage. He expressed relief that he didn't end up with the kid. He said he had felt obligated to her. Again, I get that. In all, I had a good time. This morning rolls around and he tells me that he had hooked up with his ex last night and that he was going to try work things out with her. I was mildly insulted that I lost out to an abusive chick, but it's whatever. I tell him it's cool. He then, a few hours later, texted me to say that she was crazy and he thought she was changing but she wasn't, blah blah blah. He kept asking if he could meet me. He was being very pushy about wanting to see me today. He begged for five minutes of my time so he could explain to me. I politely explained to him that I didn't want to be involved with someone who was so clearly hung up on his ex. This is where it got nuts. He admitted he still was, but that he wanted to see me today so I could meet her and she could determine if I was better for him than she was and she wanted him to be happy because he and I had a connection. I flipped after that. I told him the fact that he needed his ex to determine who was right for him was absolutely nuts and that's not what love is and that I wanted no part of it. His ex started texting me after that and it was non-stop insults and incoherent shit that made no sense. She also dropped the bomb that she was his wife. I told her to fuck off basically and blocked the number. I went on Tinder to message him where I called him a piece of shit and said if he ever was intelligent, he should leave her and never message me again. He started to harass me saying that I was miserable because they had a beautiful love together and all this crazy shit. He then went on to say, my wife knows where you work, I hope she doesn't do anything rash. And I told him that was a threat and I would gladly go to the police if he keeps harassing me. He then said that she's been to jail before, she's not afraid, and that she loves him so much she'd fuck anyone up and risk jail time for him. That she'd kill my friends if they tried to protect me. That she's armed and dangerous. I told him goodbye, reported him, and deleted my Tinder account. I did go to the police tonight, but since it wasn't a direct threat, they can't do too much. The cop thinks that James was more or less full of shit and just trying to scare me since some people love getting off on that shit. He said that I did the right thing by blocking him and reporting him and said I should just keep my eyes open and alert the people at my job. Scary thing is, James seemed perfectly normal, but he lied to me about being married, how he felt towards his wife, and he flipped like a switch. His excuse for not being upfront about being married was that they were going to get a divorce. He seemed so docile and unassuming, and the hatred and aggressive attitude was insane. I have to honestly wonder what would have happened had I gone to talk for five minutes or whatever the hell he asked me to do. I'm kind of concerned since they do know where I work, but if either of them try anything, then the cops can actually nail them. What a weekend. Okay, so I met a guy on Tinder and we talked for a bit and exchanged Facebooks. A couple of days after chatting, we met up in a public place near my house. He seemed okay, cute, not too weird, and into the same sort of things as me. However, as the day went on, it became clear to me and I assumed him that we were better off just as friends. At the end of the date, he walked me part of the way to my house, not to my door as I didn't exactly want him to know where I lived and we parted ways. We didn't really talk much after that, just a couple of conversations here and there and stuff. But anyways, a week or so later I was chilling at home, chatting to a friend on the phone while my mom was asleep. I get a Facebook message from the guy, hey, you, I've left a gift for you outside your door. At that point, 
I was freaking the fuck out. It was like 2 a.m. and he walked all the way to my house. He told me he didn't drive and he lived a couple of villages away. I was genuinely terrified for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I had no idea how he got to my house or knew my address. Maybe it was on one of my messages. I know back then it would attach where he sent the messages from, but anyway, it was creepy as fuck regardless. Secondly, I didn't know if he was still out there waiting for me. I couldn't see shit out my window because the street lights turn off at midnight. So still on the phone to my friend, I went to the stairs and checked. He wasn't still outside. I was too freaked out to open the door, so I went back upstairs and eventually got to sleep. It wasn't easy to, believe me. The next morning, I opened the door to see a big fucking bunch of flowers with a romantic message attached. It was a harmless message, but still not okay to do. So to the guy who thought it was okay to walk to my house in the middle of the night and leave me flowers, let's not meet. Also, maybe stop doing that sort of thing from now on. It's pretty creepy.